Um, <clears throat> I think some of the things that I wanted to say, though, though I'm not an economist, have, have been said and said far more articulately than I could by my predecessors. So I'm not going to run over that same terrain. I'll, I'll pick out things that uh, are, are uh, I, I view to be particularly significant in the relationship, where it has been and where it's going to. I would suggest that the first, the first thing I would suggest is that the scholarship and research agenda of, the f of this first phase asked a basic question, is China going to change Africa? Variations on that theme. Is China going to, the, the carefully crafted OECD DAC framework for how Africa ought to operate to improve and achieve development? seem to be challenged by the entry of a new, uh, uh, of a new partner or a partner from uh, a newly empowered partner, I should say. Um, I would suggest that that agenda still remains a feature of the kinds of research questions that uh, we, we uh, research that's out there, but that the, there is a second question emerging, uh, and again, it's implied in things that both my predecessors have said, which is, is it actually China changing Africa or is Africa changing China? Because the China that we heard described by Rafi and others is one that is beginning to alter, to learn, to absorb, having spent more than a decade and a half in this new surge on the continent and in, in the context, it's, it, it's beginning to adapt to the conditions that are there. An African agency is a key part of that adaptation. In fact, I would say the success of China uh, across any of these uh, uh, sectors is defined, and that's often missing from our discussions, is defined from, uh, f by the degree to which African institutions, African regulatory regimes, African markets, and hard infrastructure in place. If those are, with those features, you have the context within which uh, a business-oriented, a commercially-minded a form of engagement can, can thrive or not thrive. And so I would suggest from, if we were to sort of look at it in the broad scheme of things, that that, that uh, uh, is, is a useful way of thinking about it. Um, some other comments. Most of China-Africa studies remains a bilateral a study of two, two countries. There are sectoral, comparative sectoral studies that, that take place, but uh, it, it's, uh, the thrust of engagement has been primarily country to country. So, uh, and it's an asymmetrical relationship by definition. So we have to start with that understanding of the, the, the lack of symmetry between the two players. Or to paraphrase Julius Nereri, it's the most unequal of equal partnerships. Um, but things in that realm are changing. There is an interest, uh, certainly, as early as 2011 that I'm aware of, but uh, on uh, an interest in re regional, inter-regional trade to expand, help Africans expand the market, to build infrastructure that links up countries that had formerly been uh, isolated, leaving the, inf the, the legacy of, of uh, colonialism and all of that. Um, so I think there is an interest on the Chinese side, or there is, it's clear in West Africa, discussions of support for a, trans-regional railroad, we see the same thing in the East African community. Um, so this, this is a, a shift, if you like. Um, I agree also on, on uh, this notion of, or I would say, I, I see it more in evolutionary terms, but I, 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 I defer to my colleagues on this one, but uh, resource seeking may have started the latest phase, if you like, but market seeking is where, is dominating it. The former, we see the state playing a, hev a, a, a heavier hand, the latter, it's private sector interests. Um, and so that, that uh, I think, is the trend, and it's reflected in, in the heavy-handed approach, which the, the not-so-successful approach, special economic zones, on one hand, versus the private forms of these, which seem to be better suited. Um, <coughs> security. 2012 was a big turning point for, for China and Africa. A lot, of, a lot of difficulties emerged out of that, and from that, uh, the Libyan one being the most obvious, but it was a series, a culmination 
of, of, uh, of uh, thinking around South Sudan, around uh, different, different positions or presence of China around the region. And uh, <coughs> we saw a Chinese response, working together with African partners at the FOCAC, Forum China-Africa Cooperation, it was put on the table that, uh, that China can be involved in partnerships in security matters in, in Africa. So the thinking is already there working out the details, working out what that means in policy terms, that's, that's, that's uh, still being, uh, that's still in process. Um, so I think that's something that one has to keep in mind. And part of that is a notion of risk. China had a vision of risk in Africa that, that was out of sync, with the ex certainly out of sync with the experience of the Western corporates and what have you, but also uh, out of sync with, with, as they discovered, with the, con the, the complex uh, environment within which they found themselves, within which they developed uh, company, uh, sought to develop uh, markets, et cetera. And the last thing uh, I, I want to say um, is that I think that one way to characterize people, you, you've characterized this as a, as a um, a, a relationship of many actors. There's no one China. There are many Chinas. There's no one Africa. There are many Africas, of course. We, we uh, must take that point of departure. I think, however, there's some spe specificities that we can draw when it comes to China, Africa in this bi in, in its primary form, China-Africa relations played out bilaterally, is that we have a relationship that is uh, the relationship of a house. Uh, um, I'm, I'm stealing from Peter Vale, <coughs> who characterized this in the early 90s. He talked about an upstairs relationship and a downstairs relationship. The upstairs relationship is one organized, secured between governing elites in however, whatever political, commercial form they take, and they make the arrangements, framework <coughs> agreements, formal, formal uh, arrangements of all kinds. Um, and that has proven to be the first, that's part of that first phase, and that's been quite successful in at least gaining uh, a, a presence in, in the, the local uh, market. Um, the second phase, however, is about sunk interests, sunk positions, and is about the downstairs relationship. African communities interacting with uh, their Chinese counterparts, interacting as laborers, interacting um, uh, in, in, in firms, uh, in, et, et cetera. And out of that, we see a relationship that in that first phase, which I described at the beginning of this uh, intervention, uh, we had a, a, the dominance, if you like, of upstairs. We now are seeing the emergence of downstairs. The downstairs form of that relationship is driving it increasingly. The, the, the complexity, the ability of, of, of Chinese firms and, and the state to manage the, the, uh, uh, the, the negative outcomes that, that uh, the, neg the frictions that, that appear is being compromised or, or is certainly challenged, I should say, by the, by the uh, complexity of long-term position, long-term operation in the African environment. So I'll leave it at that.